Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is a Linux Top 5 day. So what we're going to look at today is the Top 5 exciting uses for a Raspberry Pi. So I have a Raspberry Pi right here. I have this guy in a nice, a nice Raspberry Pi case. I have heat sinks over the uh, processor and GPU there. And um, this guy here serves me a lot of fun... Uh, fun uses. So I'm going to identify the five things that you can do with a Raspberry Pi and I have done some of these. I have not done others. So we are going to go ahead and dive on in. So the first one, this is the most common source of my Raspberry Pi, is an open source media center to run Kodi on an entire basically producing what you might term as a smart TV without all that crazy data tracking. And so that is the most common use of this Raspberry Pi when I'm sitting in it at home. This guy's usually completely plugged all the way into the television with HDMI here. I have audio coming out from the uh, the, the port here. I'm, uh, I have a um, you know, power adapter here. Your SD card is down here and uh, that runs my main operating system and then I actually keep my music just on a uh, USB hub just to prevent it from you know having any issues streaming back and forth and you know I don't really add a lot of music to the place so um, I don't have any of that to deal with um, but uh, the um, uh, and of course I'll plug it in I actually plug it directly in with a cat5 line that I've run to the TV rather than having to mess with anything else um, so utilizing that, that allows me to stream. I can stream YouTube videos there. I use top documentary films. I watch TED Talks. A lot of other things that are uh, free available content on, on the line that you can actually stream directly to your TV with a Raspberry Pi. I also, though, can run all of my all of my music. And if we could get rid of those stupid DMCA crap, I could even put DVDs on it. But it's still illegal here in the United States. So... Um, I guess I should say, if you're not as familiar with the Pi, it, the operating systems run on SD cards. So you can just keep an SD card around for, for different uses, and that's exactly what I have, is I just have a little stack of SD cards that keep track of what's what. Um, so of course the one that's in here right now is for that Kodi, uh, so that I can uh, just plug this guy right in. But um, the next thing that, uh, that you might be able to do with your Raspberry Pi and this is what I do when I leave the office. If I'm out traveling, then I will take out the SD card, simply plug this into a short cable on my, on my network, and um, swap out the SD card with an open VPN. And this will allow me to access any of my network shares when I am out and about on the road by all of my Linux computers will have a VPN router set up. And so I can actually do a VPN directly into my own home network, uh, which will allow me to access files or uh, basically access things as if I'm doing it on the internet. Now, I also have a video on this. I do have a video on OSMC. I have a video on setting up Pi as a VPN. I believe that this is the documentation. Uh, maybe it's not. Let's see. No, I don't think this is the same documentation that I had used, but um, I'll, have, I'll go ahead and link the video that I had. So uh, utilizing Raspberry Pi for open VPN is certainly a great thing to do. Uh, the la next thing you can do, the third item, is you can do a retro Pi game system. So if you just get a little remote control like a, a, a USB joy pad or whatever you might call this thing, uh, you can hook up uh, a Raspberry Pi with a... Uh, RetroPie build and that will give you a whole lot of emulation. Of course the downside is a lot of your games are still you know copyright crap so you can't actually do that unless you have a, an actual copy of the game. Um, but there are a lot of open source games. Uh, you can actually um, you can actually run DOS games through this. So if you happen to have any old DOS games laying around, you can hook it up. Now some people are purists with their retro systems. They want to take the whole Raspberry Pi and put it into a whole Nintendo shell and get the Nintendo controllers and do all that. I'm not that old fashioned. Um, you know, I'm just as long as I can play the games that I liked in my youth, then that's happy enough for me. And so. You know, RetroPie is a great way that you can um, you can play games. Of course, just make sure that you have um, 
uh, you know, you have copyright rights to use anything on there. Uh, don't be breaking copyright and just look around for, for free and open source games that, that are, are not a problem. And I know if you like the old Atari, there's a lot of old Atari games that are open source or there's open source and free versions of them out there. So um, you can do that. Of course, there are other options on the Raspberry Pi. I believe you can throw a Kodi on it. Um, a lot of different things that you can do. Um, but RetroPie is a wonderful thing that you could, could do. And in fact, I keep it. Don't, don't laugh at me, folks. I have a fanny pack. I do. Okay. Um, but actually, all this contains in it is two controls, a power adapter, an extra HDMI cable. And if I happen to go in somewhere where there might be a TV, I can throw my Raspberry Pi in here. And... Uh, Take a, take a little portable game system with me. And also, on the cool thing about the Raspberry Pi, um, you can actually use a cell phone backup charger as long as it is a backup charger that can push 2 amps. 2 amps is what the Raspberry Pi needs for optimal function. And this guy here, I actually I found uh, at an Office Depot store that was closing down for, I think, probably only paid like 2 3 bucks for it. But this guy here is a uh, 5,200 amp hour... Um, phone charger, uh, basically uh, it's uh, just a basic external phone charger, and it has an out output of 2.1 amps, and so that works perfectly fine. So actually I can play the ra hook up the Raspberry Pi as a retro Pi on a battery backup, and literally it'll work. I mean, it'll work for, I mean, I, I don't know how long, long time, um, but that's uh, something you can do with it. Um, now on to the things that I have not done but are on my radar to do is Open Media Vault. So I actually run Open Media Vault on a little Pentium computer that I have here. I just ta have a little micro tower. And I, uh, I actually did a video on how to build an Open Media Vault uh, on, a, on a basic micro tower. But you can actually get downloads for a Raspberry Pi version. Now some people have questioned what is, you know, how well does this work? And it does limit, you, you are limited by the fact that the Ethernet port is, is a 110. So uh, that, that could be your limiting factor, but most people who have actually used a Raspberry Pi for an Open Media Vault build have said, no, as long as you're not doing something crazy like trying to serve you know, HD video to five different devices, it actually works just fine. And so if you just come right here to Open Media Vault's page, click the download, and then what you can do is you can uh, come down and find installation images can be found here, which takes you to your SourceForge. And if you want a Raspberry Pi image, click here. And then you'll have your Raspberry Pi images. Here's your Pi 2, here's your Pi 3. And here is, I think this is, um, uh, this might be any version of the Pi. I'm not sure for sure. Uh, but this will get you the latest version uh, of of Open Media Vault. And so I have upgraded my Open Media Vault to the latest version and it's it's still running great. Uh, but this is certainly something that, that you can do with a Raspberry Pi is if particularly if you don't have a lot of needs, if you just want want like a basic file share system, and that's what I use my Open Media Vault for a lot right now is just easily sharing files between computers. That doesn't take a lot of bandwidth, you know, and so you can easily do that. And then the next thing that's on my radar to look at down the road that I have not uh, tinkered with yet is turning your Raspberry Pi into a Wi-Fi router. So you can do this by using, you know, there's some Linux builds that will allow you to do this. There's PFSense as well that you can do this. And basically it will allow you to take your basic internet connection, maybe just out of your modem, plug it directly here into your ethernet port, put a USB um, wireless dongle here that can broadcast, create a wireless router. And then of course you can do a USB uh, a USB out to an Ethernet hub and and uh, you know export your other devices. Now I think I have, I think I have like seven or eight devices hardlined into my into my routers right now. So it's one of the reasons I haven't done it yet. Is I have a lot of devices. Um, but that being said, uh, is this does seem like an awesome thing. There are also custom scripts you can do with this. The reasons I would look into potentially doing this um, down the road is um, a getting blocking scripts so that basically what you can do is. Uh, if you watch my tinfoil hat time from last night, producing a script that will allow you to block bad websites or websites that are undesirable for your network. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, very just simply by very easily updating the host file and nothing on the network has any of that and that's the greatest way to go. 
Um, the next thing that, that you can do is there are a lot of scripts out there to produce a router that is directly configured through any specific VPN or through the Tor network. So you could have a router that anytime you connect to the thing using a Raspberry Pi, it will automatically be routing your traffic directly to either a VPN or the Tor network. So those are some excellent uses for a Raspberry Pi. Let me know what your top uses are down in the comments below. So thank you again for watching folks. And if you would like to help support what we are doing here at Switch to Linux, you can find us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M or you can use the Amazon links down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.